Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Everything Cyber. My name is Kaif and I am one of your hosts today. So before we begin today's episode, I thought we should give a very quick intro on what the episode is going to be about, as well as what specific value the episode can add to you. And in today's episode, we're going to be talking about the API security landscape in 2022. We will be going over the top threats and trends we see in the API security space. So this episode is going to be super helpful for all folks in cyber. Whether you are an application security engineer, an architect, or part of a threat detection team, today's discussion is going to add some value to you and I'm sure of it. Diving deep into what we covered. We discuss things like what's the difference between API security and traditional application security. We talked about things like why API security is important and especially now as well as going forward. We touched on things like the top threats and the issues we are seeing in the API security landscape as well as what some large companies are doing in this space. For our DFIR folks, we also touch on API security from a threat detection perspective. And finally, we ended with our top advices for people who want to get their API security right. We had lots of fun and shared tons of useful information this episode. We hope you find that valuable. If you find this episode useful, we kindly request it to share with your friends or leave a comment. And if this is your first time listening to us, then hi, thanks for joining. We would really appreciate if you could subscribe or follow us in whatever platform you're listening. Let's head straight into the video. Hello, hello. we're here now. Cool, we're here. Hi, everyone. Um, Welcome to another episode of Everything Cyber. My name is Kaif, and with me, I have Surya. Hey, guys. And today is episode number... Five. Five. Okay, a whole month of episodes <laughs> done and kicking on to the next one. It's a mini landmark for us. Um, um, and so, yeah, as always, have tons of fun uh, discussing and tons of learning. And we're looking forward to another very information-packed episode, which yeah. we can learn from. On today's topic, yeah, um, APIs. It's not a topic that I am that great, to be honest. I've uh, been doing a, tons of research on it for the past mm-hmm. few weeks, uh, but you have had more experience on it. So, yeah, so would you like to give a very quick rundown on APIs? Yeah, sure. Um, as, as we know, our target audience is more sort of upper beginner and intermediate folks. We won't be spending too much time on what an API is and how it works. But just to establish a baseline, uh, what I think APIs are and the general definition is it's a communication method between the users and the services as well as between service to service. And what the heck that does even mean, right? So what I basically mean by that uh, very bookish definition is APIs is the technology that enables uh, us to talk with the backend servers of different applications, right? So let's say we have this website and that website is a shopping website. It's Amazon and we are pressing on that button of our uh, purchase now. Mm-hmm. When we hit that button, uh, uh, we are essentially talking with the backend, the backend server that, hey, we want to purchase this. Yeah. And this communication usually happens via APIs. Mm-hmm. And it's not just humans that are doing this communication. Uh, when a service to service, like let's say um, when Google wants to talk with YouTube, like mm-hmm. Gmail, using Gmail, we're signing into our YouTube. When Google uh, Gmail wants to talk with YouTube, they also use APIs to communicate between each other. And um, I saw some stat in, in, I think it's from Akamai or something, that over 80% of uh, internet traffic is actually API traffic. Wow. That's, that's, wow. That's, that's, that's an absolutely insane number. I know, I know. Yeah. That sort of highlights into why API security is so important, and we're mm-hmm. going to dive a bit deeper into it. Yeah, yeah. That kind of ties in, you know, like APIs have been there for a very long time. You know, we've had mm-hmm. it for 
many many years more than 10 years plus like why APS security why is APS security so important at the moment you know compared mm-hmm. to the past few years why now there's a few macro trends across the industry that i really think uh is making api security super super useful and important now mm-hmm. and i'll quickly cover them on a sort of semi high level but i'll dive into a bit as well yeah the first reason i i feel api security is so important is this trend we are seeing in the industry of migrating from a monolith service to a microservice uh based architecture and what i mean by that is in the past when companies ba- build an application it used to be one giant very big application right that yeah. used to handle everything uh but now we are breaking down into smaller parts and e- that each smaller part is responsible for uh one simple thing which which makes life so much easier so yeah that's one of the uh big reasons i feel because each of these microservices need to talk between each other as yeah. well as the human the user needs needs to talk with all these microservices and like we have established before how that communication happens mm-hmm. is basically via apis so we are seeing this vast amount of more apis coming into existence for companies um on the same sort of tangent because of covid Uh, as well as in general trend what we are seeing is a rapid digitalization of um of, or what i should say a rapid digital transformation mm-hmm. and what i mean by that is a lot of companies are now uh, either being digital first or having some sort of online presence right yeah so if we think about like educational platforms or different things students didn't need to have access to all those educational resources before they they would just go into the classroom but now they need tons of other services to do so and almost everyone and anyone is now trying to be digital yeah and having a digital footprint uh, you know and that increase yeah yeah you know, know, i just got to say like you know you kind of hit the nail on that is that before it was a good to have but now it has mm-hmm. become a must have it's a it's a must have yeah. it's a must have do apart from those two big reasons one other thing i really feel it's it's sort of again building on off on top of that must have kind of nature mm-hmm. um what is often times a must have or a good to have now these days are integration like in the past we had these websites and services right they yeah. would be very isolated Absolutely. they wouldn't necessarily talk between each other but now we see a huge amount of integration between everything like you can log in via your gmail or microsoft to your facebook in the facebook you can add your card and you can add your paypal and all kinds of services like yeah. a very common a very good example i like to give is your this financial planner apps or budget apps right in the past you, everything used to be be manual yeah. but now like even in australia we have the open banking api platform where yes. all the banks their apis are now open mm-hmm. so we we are trying to we are we are starting to see different apps like frollo and many others that can use leverage api and automatically load all transactions our expenses and upcoming bills blah 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 right and it gives us that nice little dashboard from where we can monitor everything so those kind of integrations are rapidly happening everything is now kind of integrated mm-hmm. and like we mentioned to support those kind of integration we kind of do need apis yep. so yeah those were my takes so yeah do you have anything more to add on you feel why um apis are import api security is important now yeah i I think other than that the only other thing I can think about is like the online marketplaces um we have seen a rise in them uh yeah like you can think about just especially like, covid yeah especially covid right uh and these online marketplaces can be anywhere you know every single place has its own online marketplace like even uh the cloud service providers have their own marketplace and within certain applications within those cloud service providers you have further marketplaces so that's surely another point and what's this kind of ties into is like an increase of an integrated ecosystem so basically all of these marketplaces can start communicating with each other the different points can start communicating with each other and you know what this then leads to is like 
you know you can also have like tons of bots like i see happening <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah you know like while while api is like you know amazing you know i can get access to anything i can consume a resource and so on mm -hmm. like holy crap man like bots have increased so much drastically, drastically. like if there's the scalping is a big issue so yeah. bots we obviously have the ddos attacks but mm -hmm. like scalping which is using bots to purchase stuff so this is very common for like sneakers when a new sneaker drops or something like that yeah. I've, I've seen people use that even for buying pokemon cards man. <laughs> so i know i know that it's yeah. really popular with like you know like when you, you try to get like uh tickets for concerts and stuff concerts yeah yeah, yeah get sold out like instantly and you're like wait why like you know i was i thought i was first in queue yeah, uh, yeah. but yeah and but, these bots operate on the basis of apis right yeah. they can they do not have a browser that which they can go into and click in they uh they operate on the basis of apis and um that's where it is extremely uh, crucial to not just defend from traditional api security attacks but this rise of transformation and this rise of bots yeah all these things like the things we talked about the microservice based architecture rapid digital transformation increase in integrated ecosystem and finally the bots these all these are making this a super super important aspect for companies mm -hmm. yeah yeah that, that kind of as you mentioned kind of all ties in together i think you know sometimes um a good portion of people, including myself at one point, you know, we used to confuse application security uh, versus yeah. API security. And, you know, even OASP, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like I was looking, like doing research for this podcast, I was looking into it and then they had different lists. So there's an OASP top 10 for AppSec and then mm -hmm. there's an OASP mm -hmm. top 10 for API, API. Yeah. yeah. Like what are your it's thoughts on it? Yeah. Why quite do you think this segregation exists? Firstly, the difference between api security and mm -hmm. application security uh, there is some uh, differentialities but there's a, a whole ton of similarities yeah as well right the first a in api is for application so you yeah. might ask that hey why are we differentiating them mm -hmm. and on the whole there are some overlaps but yeah. there are also some interesting challenges and security issues that are very native to api API specifically. Mm -hmm. So even if you compare that OWASP top 10 and the API uh, OWASP API top 10, you'll see some differences. And so the bottom line is the way I think that there is a difference between uh, application security and API security, that application security mainly deals with the building blocks, like the creation and the development of a web application. Whereas API security, it involves a lot of the consumption and integration of that application. So APIs are used by users, pun unintended, and as well as services or consume that in, yeah. uh, that program, right, or that application, as well as therefore integrate with a lot of third party things. Yeah. And some unique challenges that come up during this different use case so that's that's basically why we have a different subset of api, um, API security and if, if you look at the two compare quickly compare the two uh, OWASP top 10 and the API top 10, you'll mm -hmm. see that OWASP top 10 has all the way from cryptography to diff um, authentication authorization to different server side or even logging based attacks. Yeah. Whereas the ma majority of the API uh, top 10, it revolves around some, um, some kind of access to data which you do, does not belong to you or like exposure to data which is not yours as well as being able to modify that data so that's usually the general theme of the api security yeah interesting that 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 surely is interesting you know that kind of brings me to the next point you know uh what are the top issues and you know how do you see that the current threat mm -hmm. landscape evolving over the past few years and like why is this such a top issue at the moment so first of all, one of the main issues of the APIs, it's, mm -hmm. which is very similar to applications, that the use case of APIs is just so broad. There is no one one size fits all solution. That the, there are obviously some uh, core underlying principles you can use, but on if we want more nuanced answer, there's not like a silver bullet that can solve everything. <laughs> you hope so. so. <laughs> the 
if you think about it, like the APIs that are used for, let's say, a financial services, they would have very different security expectations from, let's say, um, a marketplace mm -hmm. or, let's say, um, uh, a social media platform. We would see different kinds of data being transferred, different kind of data allowed to transfer and all those things, which makes it a bit more complicated. And that sort of leads into like it's not just in Atlassian, but in general, the the biggest issue we see with APIs is authorization related issues. Authentication, not so much, but authorization is definitely a big issue. Interesting. And what I mean by that is, let's say if you have access to that API, like I'm logged in using that API, it is very common to be overly permissive. Uh, for example, a very common issue is, let's say I have access to this website and the image number one, because that belongs to me. But I can, I might, because of the some API access, uh, programming issue, I can unintentionally have access to image number two as well. So you're basically saying like, if I have the access token for mm -hmm. my image, I can use that same access token then to access other images also, right? Well, yeah, that's kind that's of. one of one the, of the, one, of the one of the yeah. problems. So yeah, for example, there's lots of ways these access issues can happen, mm -hmm. but mis uh, misusage of tokens is actually a very common one. Why do you think that authentication is not such a big issue, but authorization actually is a big issue? Well, coming from a developer background, right, like I can suddenly see in most programming languages and frameworks, implementing that first part of authentication is relatively straightforward, right? That having that login page or making certain resources behind a, behind like a password protector or whatever. Yeah. But that fine grain boundary of, let's say you have, you are an authenticated user, but which access which resources you would have specifically access to mm -hmm. that is much more uh, challenging and complicated to do yeah. and so it's very easy to mess that up uh, from a developer perspective right so when we are developing software we have the end user in our mind and the end user most developers have in their mind is a is a user with a web browser trying to access things mm -hmm. the, the it, it doesn't come naturally that these users can probably have access to the API as well, right? Because yeah. that's not the traditional use case. So especially if, you, if, you, if, if there's a developer who doesn't have proper security training, that's where uh, they can start making certain assumptions that, okay, the, the user will never see the, <laughs> whatever the response is coming, right? the raw HTTP response and uh, et cetera, and we can, we can get away with stuff. But a hacker, they come with so much more in terms of tools and tricks under the tool belt and they can extract these right other information that are hidden under the plain side of our browser yeah. and they can abuse it Absolutely. and I, i've been guilty of that as well right so i'll, I'll give a very real life example of of something i've seen which was i was implementing a web app and in that web app i pretty much had or like authentication like uh, mm -hmm. basic authentication so whenever a user is authenticated, uh, an access token, which is called a bearer token, is generated for them. And using that bearer token, they would um, ac uh, access to different resources. Okay. What uh, the hiccup I made was whenever the user needs to access a resource, the website would just check that, hey, is this user logged in and a valid user? That whether this user has a valid access token or not. If yes, give access to this resource. Mm -hmm. But it never crossed my mind that someone can steal um, or someone can just get their access token extracted manually from using burp suit or whatever yeah. and use that access token to make uh, request to resources they do not have permissions to write and in this use case the website will just give direct access that's something I totally missed and then it was much later on when I was thinking thankfully nothing big happened um, I, I sort of caught that hey uh, maybe this is a security issue I should look into uh, um, yeah another common example another 
not not a common example another real life example i can give of developers uh, assuming things is during a pen test i was doing um I, this is a third party through a bug bounty and i basically got full uh, account takeover via wow. one account token mismanagement issues and i'll tell you how basically that website had a email and email based authentication very normal you forget your password you request for for like a resetting right and traditionally we have a box where there's like a you put your email and there's a button that send email mm -hmm. so what i noticed that when there when i put an email that does not have an account nothing weird happens but if i have an account in that and i put my email and say forget password in the browser side again nothing weird happens but i was intercepting the request with burp suit um, and i saw that whenever i click that forget password um, basically the website would sp spit out that particular email that particular users um, access token as well as mm -hmm. http raw http response and i'm like wow. hey so what i then could do is enumerate whatever the user so yep. I, f I found the admin's email <laughs> and then i basically say forget password and i got the admin's access token and i basically had full control uh. because using that access token i can just send requests on the back end right so yeah, it was it was again another issue where the developers assume that just because it's not being visible in the browser, that the user won't have access to it, yeah. um, and that leads to a lot of access authentic authorization related issues as well as doing proper authorization on itself is much more complicated than authentication, and that's why I see we see much more of these issues in APIs. Yeah, um, yeah, that's interesting. Um, yeah, from my side, I had like a point on like bots, you know, mm -hmm. like, as you said earlier, like bots have been like increasing the amount of yeah. bots that are being used has been increasing year on year. Uh, and, you know, some have been increased drastically and these bots can now like attack uh, these APIs at such high rates, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like you can just like spam and try to brute force your way in or like just crash the server via DOS attack. Um, or DDoS attack. So all of these are like some issues that are building up and that's one of another point I had. Do you have any, any other points that you had in specific? Uh, in terms of top threats we see, right? Um, it's not directly a threat, but one issue I do see a lot, mm -hmm. uh, it is somewhat to do with that rapid digital transformation is proper API management. Like, so API is like just another asset. What you don't know, you can't protect, and what you don't know properly uh, on what the asset is, what it's what it's doing. Again, you can't. It's it's bound to have have yeah. some mistakes. So, when a company starts as a small company, you have five APIs, ten APIs, but it with 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 the onboarding of cloud microservices the number of apis can very quickly go to hundreds thousands and uh, and so on right so and you the number as you, it. yeah very easy to lose track of it so what is record what is, is it logging if, whether that has proper authentication or not all these things is is like get super uh, complicated yeah. so again another uh, another story I have to share. Um, it, it was it is related to the API not not being handled properly, which was I was doing a security test of a new feature mm -hmm. of a of a popular app, let's say, um, and basically the app was uh, the API was uh, something like prod dot let's say everything cyber mm -hmm. dot um, um, dot something slash uh, uh, account right so and it, everything was well it had proper authentication authorization all's good no no excessive information leaked or sharing um nothing like that yeah however then what it hit me that hey let's see if everything's secure is 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 it the only api so instead of prod dot everything cyber what i did was staging dot everything cyber dot com slash identity or account blah mm -hmm. blah blah right and that gave me access to the staging environment and what i quickly then discovered in the staging environment that it's it's very similar it's a mirror of the production but many apis do not have proper authentication 
uh, or authorization in place as well as certain API endpoints uh, was giving me far more information compared to its production counterpart. Yeah. So for so for people who do not know, staging is usually the dev environment or the development environment where the, um, the, uh, the engineers are testing and building the APIs, right? So when you are testing and building something uh, for the purpose of speed, you usually have a bit of less permissions uh, and a, a less restrictions and a bit more information. Mm -hmm. So yeah. things like uh, logging, lo logging or bug re uh, debugging, basically debugging yeah. based, basically those things. So what ended up happening is by accessing the staging APIs, I had um, access to certain information that I wouldn't have accessed as well as it was giving me far more information about the application and certain users and that could be used by the attacker to do mm -hmm. much dangerous things. And mm -hmm. that is a classic example of not having your API sorted out properly and not having a proper API yeah. management. And as the infrastructure goes more and more complex, we see these kind of issues happen more. Yeah, yeah, that's that's very interesting. You know, like coming tying it all together, it seems to be a mix of like access issues, authorization mm -hmm. issues to data, and then management and gaining visibility. So mm -hmm. these are some of the trends that we're seeing in the top issues of APIs. So now coming to on how do we fix this, right? So what are the security trends that you see happening on how we are remediating against these threats? Absolutely. And um, well, again, there's no silver bullet to this, but uh, a very common thing that alleviates a lot of the pain is, again, it's nothing new, but with the amount of APIs increasing, people are s slowly uh, adopting this architecture or architectural approach called API gateways. Mm -hmm. So um, APIs ga API gateways, as this image shows, that in the past, we would have the clients directly talking with the applications or let's say even if a pretty modern app has microservices, the client apps can directly talk with the microservices. An API gateway is basically like, a, it's like a security check or a corridor that all the requests flow through and then go to the microservices or the backend, right? Mm -hmm. So it's it's like an additional layer between the client and the backend. And in this layer, I mean, it's not just security. People also uh, do their reliability, observability, like logging and many other things, but security hugely benefits from API gateways. The reason being that in the API gateway, you can have one single place to do your logging you can you can have in that API gateway, like in Atlassian, we also do our proper authentication and authorization via that API gateway as well, uh, right? So, so it's like one place to do all the basic security things. Yeah, so it'll make it much easier for the developers, you know, at the end of the day, like it yeah. becomes much easier for them to uh, combat the biggest issue of API security. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the reason being that, you know, developers, uh, if we have an API gateway, all the security chain, uh, security controls can be central in one one nice. single place. Nice. So for all the new microservices you're launching, you don't need to do security or logging individually in all of those anymore. Mm -hmm. You can just have all of that in the API gateway, and um, that can be the source of truth to control all that. Nice. So it's like you're lifting the weight of from the developers about worrying all those things and just giving them something to sort of plug and play. You just put it on top and then you go go mm -hmm. do your thing. That does help a lot, you know, because then because if we, let's say in the future we are gonna roll some new security changes or a new logging, we don't need to go and change it in five to hundred different APIs. We can just go in one place and then yeah. do that. So yeah. that's that's one of the big pattern shifts I'm I've been seeing. More and more companies are having their API gateways, and yeah. it's it's not like you need to build this ground up. Many companies do, but a lot of the cloud service providers are even providing API, API gateways, gateways yeah, like out of the box, AWS like AWS, stars, yeah. yeah, yeah, Azure. So even if you, if you, if, if your uh, infrastructure and backend is on the cloud, you can just enable that and just, yeah, let, let it handle a lot of the crucial stuff. 
Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with that. That's, that's an interesting point, though. It kind of helps in solving the authorization mm-hmm. and authentication issues that can rise. Um, mm. yeah. I, I do have. Yeah. Uh, let's let's reverse the role. I actually have a question for you. Okay. Because I know you you are you have the threat threat detection and intel background. Yeah. So I'm just curious that uh-huh. from a threat intel or detection perspective, uh, is there anything specific to API security you're seeing? I think I think the first thing that you did cover before in terms of API management that I see is like visibility. Like mm-hmm. the whole point of us being monitoring stuff is that we only can monitor stuff that is visible to us. So mm-hmm. if if we do not have visibility to an API, then we'll never know that you know someone's accessing resources that they should mm-hmm. not be doing or some injection type of attack is happening or someone is trying to brute force their way through, you know. Mm-hmm. So those kind of detections that we have can only occur after like logging has been enabled. So the mm-hmm. first key thing is like, hey, I need visibility to these APIs to ensure that some form of logging or visibility is there towards the APIs. And then from there, usually a set of detections, like, you know, core detections, like suddenly if you see spikes in the usage or mm. other types of detection, if you see like a blatant injection attack, you know. And is that is that some kind of scripts or? Uh, it can or... be, aut- I think there are like set of rules that you have that can automatically detect it based on certain patterns. Uh, and those are like very basic detections, if you think about it. The more advanced ones that start coming further is like if you start using some kind of like machine learning based detections that look at like behavioral patterns and stuff. So like it it monitors the behaviors of the APIs over a period of time and it sees if something is abnormal. Uh, I see. So it takes, let's say, the API traffic for day to day activity or Mm -hmm. let's say for a human user. Right. Mm -hmm. And it trains on it. So when a bot comes, and obviously the bot clicks uh, much faster than the human, and it will much, it'll do, it'll yeah. behave very differently than the human, right? Yeah. So the machine learning can pick up on that yeah. that behavioral anomaly and trigger that okay, this is probably a bot or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it's basically kind of like you could say like you know as uh, like our alerts cover one segment. And then the mm-hmm. machine learning side can cover other segments that we might be missing from our alerts. Like, you know, oh, like, yeah, oh, wait, we did not think about this. Then this could provide another one. And I think, you know, a, an easier way to solve these issues is like if, you, if you're using an AWS Cloud Gateway, for example, right? You could just in, enable like AWS Cloud Trail and we, we would start getting logs like who is accessing, like what identity is accessing this resource, what actions are they performing on that mm. resource and stuff, right? Uh, and that, again, it helps it make give us visibility and that visibility is giving us detection and that detection can then allow us to then close any loopholes that are existing within the system Mm. so i think for sure logging and having some sort sort of visibility into your apis is key but it it does get harder with scale but that's when you start need to having to manage it with like machine learning a bit Mm. interesting thanks for that well, um, looking at the time, I think that's that's all the time we have today. So we, mm-hmm. Surya, we talked about why API security is important now, the landscape, the top threats, the trends, some of the interesting ways company are combating we are combating them, yep. as well as some threat intel specific things, which was super fun. Is there any last thing or anything else you want to cover today, Surya? Uh, no, but I think I think I think we had a very good chat on this. Uh, It was very nice, like having a discussion on both the landscape side of things and then how we could actually sort this out was very insightful to me. Mm -hmm. And for people who want to get some more hands-on learning on API, um, I highly recommend them to... uh, OWASP has something called Crappy, Crappy, um, which is the API sort of vulnerable API application and you can go play around with it. Um, we actually have a very cool lab session coming on it in the coming weeks. So stay tuned if you want to see some hands-on exploitation of APIs. Um, there was a new book um, called Hacking APIs. Uh, that's been a buzz and I've seen it being recommended in a few podcasts as, mm-hmm. as well as a few of my colleagues. And I personally, another thing I can 
recommend for people um, if you want to have a very quick in, uh, intro is two things. First one is Contra Security. And again, we, we are no ways be sponsored or any kind of incentivized by Contra Security, but it's just something I found useful. They have a top API top 10 sort of lab thing, which is super fun. Yes. And there's this other uh, university called Appy Secure. It, it was quite fun and hands-on as well. So these are all the tools people, and sorry, all the resources people can use to sort of get some hands-on API hacking knowledge if, if they really wanted to. Nice, nice. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I think that's all for today. Thank you so much again for joining us. We hope uh, you found it useful and we uh, hope to see you in the future ones. Thanks yeah. everyone. Thanks guys. Bye. Bye.